When I was a little kid, still in the single digits, I lived with my family out in the middle of the country, surrounded by trees and marshland. My dad built our house very close to a thick, deep forest. This forest always spooked me as a kid, and it bothered me even more that my bedroom window faced it. Around the same time, my family owned a Great Dane. She was a big dog, not allowed in the house at all, so we kept her outside and she slept in the doghouse in the backyard next to the forest. As she was my first real pet, I was very attached to her and I would spend a lot of time playing with her in the backyard. She was a very friendly, loving, playful, and protective dog. The perfect pet for a bored kid living out in the country. I felt a bit safer having her outside at night, feeling as though she would protect me from whatever might come out of the forest. While exploring the forest with my dad and our dog, we discovered something peculiar. Around 20 yards into the forest was a large circular cement structure embedded into the ground. It was a large flat ring with a circumference of about 6 feet with a smaller flat circle inside of it. My dad told me that it was probably an old well that was abandoned long ago and filled in with cement for safety. It seemed strange to me that a well would have been built this deep in the forest, but I figured that maybe the well was really, really old, and the forest merely grew around it over time, long after it was abandoned. As we turned around to make our way back home, I tripped over a tree root and bumped my head on the outer ring. The impact apparently knocked me out cold, and my dad had to carry me back home to get me medical treatment. I recovered just fine, but ever since that happened, I began sleepwalking. During these episodes, I would open up my bedroom window, crawl outside, and walk into the forest. When I would wake up the next day, I would find myself curled up on top of the weird cement structure with the dog laying down next to me. Usually my parents would find us this way and they quickly developed a routine of automatically searching the same spot in the forest whenever they couldn't find me in bed. Late one night during one of these sleepwalking episodes, I awoke much earlier than usual. When I awoke on top of the old, sealed well, it was still dark and the dog was nowhere to be found. Suffice to say, I was pretty spooked. I called out to her, hoping she would come fetch me. After about 10 minutes of calling and no dog arriving, I gave up and decided to head back home. The forest was nearly pitch black as the tree canopy was thick, blocking out all the moonlight, so the only light came from the distant yard light in the backyard. I hastily followed the light back home, being sure never to look behind me. When I reached the backyard, I decided to check on the dog. As I approached the doghouse, I sensed something was very, very wrong. Slowly peeking my head inside the doghouse, I saw her laying stiffly in the back, faintly illuminated by the glow of the yard light. She was silent and unmoving. Her eyes were wide, open and unblinking. Her face was contorted into a bizarre snarl. Suddenly feeling uneasy, I quickly went back inside the house and woke up my parents. After waiting for what felt like an eternity while they checked on the dog outside, they eventually came back in and confirmed that she had died. This was the first time in my young life that I had experienced anything even remotely relating to death, so the event affected me rather harshly. I had lost my best friend, and I no longer felt safe from the forest. We buried her in the backyard, underneath her doghouse, and held a small funeral for her. About a week or two after we buried her, my dad noticed that the burial site had been disturbed by what appeared to be a wild animal. From the forest to the doghouse was a trail of sunken ground. It looked exactly like the sort of trail that moles leave in the lawn, only much, much bigger. My father could only muster something about coyotes digging up the ground. Upon exhuming the burial site, we noticed the corpse was gone. We assumed that the body had been cleaned by scavengers and went on of our lives. Oddly enough, after the dog's death, I never wandered back into the forest or the old cement well ever again. The sleepwalking episodes began to last shorter and shorter and eventually stopped altogether. It felt as though I'd finally found peace at last, even if it did come at a heavy price. Then, after many nights of peace, I suddenly had another episode of sleepwalking, the first one in months, and this one came with a nightmare. In the dream, I was in the backyard when I began to sense an odd presence. Turning my head, I witnessed my dog slowly emerging from within the forest. At first, I was thrilled. My best friend had returned, and my mind raced with all the thoughts of what we could play and where we would go. But it didn't take long for me to notice that something was different about her. Very different. Her eyes were sunken and white. Her body was hairless, and her skin was pale, almost translucent pocketed with red blotches and bruises. Her frame was withered, decrepit, emaciated. She was walking on her hind legs. 
her limbs elongated and her body and skeleton twisted and contorted into a crude anthropomorphic mockery. I ran from her in fright, and she followed, running after me on her hind legs in a freakish gait. The worst part was that she spoke to me, begged with me, pleaded in a warped, warbling, shrill voice, a dog imitating a human voice as best as it could. Why are you running from me? I love you. Don't you miss me? I thought you loved me. Her head sagged and rolled around on her shoulders as she ran, her crooked neck unable to support the weight. The look on her face was that of terrified desperation and love, the purest form of love I have ever seen. When I awoke from the nightmare, I was at the old well again. My fingernails were all bloody and a few were missing. The cement filling the well had scratches all over it, as if I'd been clawing at it all through the night. Ever since that night, I could no longer go into the backyard without seeing a large, dark shape moving through the forest. Mm -hmm.